核燃料サイクルはどうしても必要なのか原発以外にエネルギーの選択肢はないのか東京大学に原子力専門の科学者を訪ねましたマダラメ・ハルキ教授は政府の原子力政策を決める原子力委員のメンバーの一人です。イエスの方はですね、とにかくわかんないけれどもやってみようはどうしてもあります。で、ダメ、危ないってなったら、ちょっとでもその兆候があったらそこで手を打とうと。恐る恐るですよ。原子力もそうなんですね。原子力もそういうところは絶対あります。だって、例えばですね、原子力発電所を設計したときには、あの、応力腐食割れ、SCC なんていうのは知らなかったんですよ。だけど、あのまだいろんなそういう分かんないことがあるからあの、えー、と安全率っていうかですね余裕をたくさん持ってでその余裕に収まるだろうなと思って始めてるわけですよ、うん、そしたら SCC が出てきちゃった、うん、でチェックしてみたらまあこれはこの余裕なんかが収まってよかったよかった、うん、今までよかったよかったできてます、うん、でただしよかったじゃないシナリオもあるでしょうねって言われると思うんですよ、うん、その時は原子力発電所止まっちゃいますね、うん原子力発電に対して安心する気なんてきませんよ、うん、せめて信頼してほしいと思うんですけど<笑>安心なんかできるわけないじゃないですかあんな武器なのその核廃棄物の最終処分をすることは技術的に問題なくても、はい、そこを受け入れる場所がなければ今困っちゃいますもん、うん、ないですよねフランスでもイギリスでもまた決まってない,、うん、ないですよそれ<笑>大きな問題じゃないですか、うん、いやだから、うん、あのえー、っと基本的にそのなんていうのかな今の路線で今の路線が本当に正しいかどうか別として今の路線かなんかで会があるだろうと思ってるわけですよというのは最後の処分地の話は最後は結局お金でしょあのどうしてもそのえとみんなが受け入れてくれないってなったらじゃあお宅にはこれそのじゃあえと今までこれこれってしたけどその2倍払いましょうそれでも手を挙げないんだったらじゃあ5倍払いましょう10倍払いましょうどっかで国民が納得することが出てきますよそれは経済的インセンティブとそのあの処理費なんてたかが知れてるから、えええー、多分そのそこは引き出さないですね今確か最終処分中を受け入れてくれるボーリング調査をさせてくれるだけですごいお金流してますね20億円ですよ、うん、あれがたかが知れてるらしいですよあの世界はそうなんですか、うん、だから原子力発電っていうのはものすごい儲かってるんでしょうねきっとねそりゃそうですよ。原子力発電所を一日止めると、一億どころじゃないわけですよね。だから、そういう意味からいくと、今動いている原子力発電所を潰す気なんてアメリカも応答ないし、日本も電力会社、あるものはもうできる限り使いたいっていうのは、これは本当、本音ですよ。増え続ける核廃棄物を最終的にどうするのか、100万年間保管するその方法は、世界中のどこも決まっていません。Representatives from the group held a press conference in Tokyo after prosecutors officially decided to open the case. I hope the probe goes well so that people will be compensated for their suffering caused by the accident. That decision could open officials in the government and Tokyo Electric Power Company to charges of professional negligence resulting in death or injury. But the prosecutors will first have to identify the cause of the accident. But the prosecutors will first have to identify the cause of the accident. Government and civil probes have failed to do so. Medical experts say it will also be difficult to determine if radioactive material released during the nuclear crisis harmed residents in Fukushima or elsewhere. What the fuck? Medical experts say it will also be difficult to determine if radioactive material released during the nuclear crisis harmed residents in Fukushima or elsewhere.
I would like to explain something historical to better your understanding. Japan used to be ruled by a king, the emperor. Even in this 21st century, the concept of individual rights as a citizens compared to the West may seem kind of shallow and not ingrained into us yet. Parents and teachers used to tell children the best thing you could do was to die for the country. Kamikaze pirates in the war embodied this uh, Japanese spirit. In World War II, they always told us that we were winning every battle. No one knew about Okinawa, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's exactly the same now. The current government that is not telling people what is happening is the same as we have had since World War II. In Japan's history, one of the highest ideas is to kill all of one's emotions. The government knows this. Japanese people are not used to protesting or speaking back. Keep your country alive by killing yourself. I think the way to save the children at Fukushima is to get the world involved. If we don't protect our children now, it will be too late when we are the second Chernobyl. Not allowing the children to escape is a murder. People from across Japan are getting their chance to weigh in on how they feel about nuclear energy and what role it might play in their future. The government launched a series of public hearings on energy policy, the latest held in Fukushima. Residents there and elsewhere want to know what will happen to nuclear power. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa reports. Fukushima clearly showed that nuclear power can get out of control when something goes wrong. I think that's the lesson all of us have learned. Government officials have heard from the public before, but they've never heard what they heard here. People express their fears about nuclear power. Fears they saw realized at Fukushima Daiichi. Fukushima Prefecture is the ninth location to host a public hearing on the future of Japan's energy policy. Government officials want to gauge people's opinions on nuclear power. They presented participants with three options. The first is known as the zero percent option. It proposes eliminating nuclear power by 2030. The second would have nuclear power provide 15% of the country's energy. Under the third option, Japan would return to the same nuclear power reliance as before the accident, between 20 and 25%. Many residents criticized government officials for how they managed previous hearings. Some of the speakers at those meetings stood up in favor of nuclear power. It turns out they were, in fact, employees of electric utilities. The officials changed their protocol in Fukushima. They banned utility employees and tripled the number of speakers. Do you need the sort of energy that sacrifices the lives of people who work at the plant? Numbers are not what we're talking about here. I hope that as much of our intelligence as possible can be used for the development of the best technology for generating renewable natural energy. Others asked whether government leaders would even consider the suggestions in making decisions. I hope future policy reflects our opinion. They're just letting us vent frustration. Government officials will wrap up these public hearings this week. They've heard unprecedented opposition to nuclear power, and that seems to be growing. Many want to know whether government leaders will take such opinions into account when they define Japan's new energy policy. One of Japan's political heavyweights has proposed scrapping all the nation's nuclear power plants in 10 years. Ichiro Ozawa defected from the ruling Democratic Party and launched a new party last month.
In a news conference on Wednesday, he unveiled the party's key policies. Ozawa said that kokumin no seikatsu ga daiichi, or people's lives first, will promote technologies for energy conservation and renewables. He also rejected the Democrats' consumption tax hike, saying it would deal a heavy blow to small businesses and people working in farming, forestry and fisheries. He said those industries are not strong enough. Ozawa pledged that the party would grant a total of about $500 billion in government subsidies and funds to provincial governments to implement its policies. In a fresh sign of disaster recovery, fishermen of Kushima Prefecture have sent octopus for sale to markets in Tokyo and Nagoya. It's their first shipment to large cities since last year's nuclear accident. The fishermen shipped some 200 kilograms of octopus caught more than 50 kilometers away from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Fishing around Fukushima for three kinds of marine products on a trial basis resumed in June following a voluntary 15-month suspension. On a trial basis resumed in June following a voluntary 15-month suspension. The catch has been sold in Fukushima and neighboring Miyagi Prefecture as no radiation has been detected so far. As no radiation has been detected so far. We look forward to seeing what consumers in big cities far away really think about produce from Fukushima. The octopus shipped to Tokyo will be sold on Thursday at the Tsukiji Fish Market. Survivors of the atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki often say they're afraid the world will forget. Now, the United Nations has published some of their stories, subtitled in 11 languages. The online project was organized after UN Secretary General Pan Ki-moon called for preserving their testimonies for younger generations. The project's website features 12 people now living in the Americas. Their stories are subtitled in English, Spanish, Arabic, Chinese and other languages. Kaoru Ito, a resident of Sao Paulo, Brazil, says that only those who saw the devastation after the bombings can really understand the evil of atomic weapons. There are no A-bomb survivors around me because I am now 90 years old. But I feel the need to tell my story to young people so that future generations will not forget. UN officials in charge of the project say they hope it will help create a world free of nuclear weapons.